Andrea Hetling is Professor of Public Policy at the Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy at Rutgers University. She's also recently appointed as the Associate Director of the Heldrick Center for Workforce Development at Rutgers. Dr. Hetling's research interests focus on how public programs and policies can support economic well-being and financial stability among vulnerable populations, including families living in poverty and survivors of intimate partner violence. In 2019, Dr. Hedling was selected as one of only five Family Self-Sufficiency and Stability Research Network Scholars and awarded a five-year grant by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Before getting her PhD, Andrea worked as a program administrator at a domestic violence agency, focusing on advocacy and development issues as a strong believer in the public impact of applied policy research Dr. Hedling regularly connects her research projects with her teaching and mentoring and to her service to the greater community. Andrea, you are uh, currently Professor of Public Policy at the Blaustein School of Planning and Public Policy at Rutgers and Associate Director of the Heldrick Center for Workforce Development. Please tell me about your work at the Blaustein School and the Heldrick Center and the projects you're currently working on. Sure, and Carl, thank you so much for for having this little chat. Um, I have, you know, as you know, been at the Blaustein School for about fifteen years now, and generally speaking, my projects focus on topics related to U.S. social policy, um, particularly those policies at the state level that affect um, family well-being, family financial self-sufficiency, um, or stability, as I prefer to call it. Um, I'm currently working on a couple projects um, with the state, looking at the TANF program, about to embark on um, kind of a follow-up project with a domestic violence organization right here in New Brunswick, um, looking at the supports that they provide, and particularly as they interact with public um, policies and services. Um, and as I think about sort of this broad, kind of topic of research in terms of financial stability, particularly for low-income women. Um, it would um, be irresponsible of me not to recognize the importance of childcare um, in that picture. Um, and I'm pleased to um, report that I've been working on a couple of projects related to that topic, including a large collaborative one with a couple other centers here in um, at Rutgers and with some wonderful staff here at the Heldrick Center. What has been your greatest achievement in your career and what or who helped you succeed? That's such a tough question. Um, <laughs> there have been lots of projects and um, kind of products that I've been really proud of. Um, and I think that those span my um, research service and teaching obligations as as an academic. Um, if I had to pick one, I, I think I would probably say kind of just entering academia to begin with. Um, I am a first generation college student. I will admit as an undergrad, I don't think I ever fully understand what my professors did. Um, and it never appealed to me um, as a career option. Um, and it really wasn't until I embarked on my doctoral program, which was not with the goal to be to get into academia it was with the goal of um, learning how to do good policy research and um, with the desire to perhaps someday work in DC and sort of a policy think tank. And was a professor there at the University of Maryland in College Park um, that asked if I would teach a class. Um, and my first reaction to him was, um, no, thank you. Um, not what I kind of want to do. And, and after some back and forth in which he was trying to convince me that all doctoral students should have the opportunity to teach. Um, and I was very adamant that Professor Lopez, I have no desire to teach. Um, we came to a little compromise so I could fill a gap in the program. Um, and I ended up teaching a summer class in statistics and loved it. Um, and I um, 
credit Professor Lopez for convincing me to take on that. I think oftentimes um, when I think about my professional life, some of my um, greatest achievements were opportunities that were presented to me by others, um, not necessarily planned steps um, that I had five, 10 years out. And it was kind of the um, motivation to take on those new opportunities and teaching was definitely one of them. And it totally changed my professional course and has allowed me to um, have a kind of form this wonderful um, professional life at a public state university that includes mentoring, teaching, and really impactful research. And I'm so grateful to that opportunity and, and happy I decided to do it and really happy with where it took me. What does Women's History Month mean to you? So for me, I think Women's History Month is a is a time that's kind of more reflective than celebratory, if that makes any sense. I know that the kind of um, general um, kind of framing of Women's History Month, along with other months that, that recognize the accomplishments of various groups, um, tends to have a very celebratory connotation, you know, the accomplishments of women. Um, for me, it's always been a time to kind of reflect on where we are now, um, the progress that we've made and not made. Um, so it's kind of a challenge. I, I think of the month as a challenge to myself, to others, um, to not only recognize um, change and accomplishments, but also to understand kind of where we are and um, the progress that's hopefully yet to come um, and the challenges that we still need to take on. Which women, either living or deceased, inspire you the most? This is another great question and and um, a difficult one, right? A difficult one for anyone, I think. Um, all of us have um, been inspired and influenced by a, a number of individuals. And I can think of, you know, multiple women, um, Personally, you know, within my family life, um, professionally, outside, historically, um, um, given the time we're in, I, who I um, highlight today is a um, woman named Lesha Ukrainka, who um, is a was a literary figure, a scholar, um, a feminist, a cultural activist um, who was born in the late 1800s um, and worked. Um, professionally and personally on causes related to the Ukrainian language. She published um, in Ukrainian, which at the time um, was a very political statement. Um, it continues to be in some respects. Um, she struggled with um, health issues. Um, she passed away relatively young um, in her early 40s and in um, her short professional life really um, inspired many, um, was very active um, politically and culturally and made many statements that I and, and actions that I think were not only um, sort of powerful at the time, but continues to be so. Um, when my daughters um, learn about her life, one of the kind of um, facts that that stick out and are very um, memorable and make a statement was that when um, she passed away, she had only women um, carry her coffin, um, which I think in the early 1900s um, was a huge statement. And I think that now in 2023 would also be a huge statement um, if a scholar activist um, had that kind of wish. Um, so I, I think she's just, a, she's a really complex figure, um, really inspirational and um, someone that I've um, enjoyed reading um, and learning about um, for years. And I'm sure I have not read all of her works and um, will continue to do so. What can women do to celebrate or reflect upon Women's History Month? you know, this is not going to be a surprising answer coming um, for me as a um, professor at a university. Um, but I think learning 
is probably um, the the you know best way of of kind of making this month meaningful. Um, so whether it's a historical figure like Lashukrinka, or whether it's current events and affairs, um, learning about the continued um, gender wage gap, um, the feminization of poverty, the experiences of intimate partner violence. Um, there's many challenges that face women unequally. Um, we've, again, made progress, and it's wonderful to celebrate, but I, I think that um, coupling um, celebrations with learning, um, and again, that can be in, in lots of different realms. Um, my um, daughter, who's 12 and in sixth grade for Black History Month, um, you know, they had a, a project in social studies, and it was such a wonderfully creative project because they could focus on anyone in any sort of aspect of the world. And that spanned from um, scientists and scholars to popular figures in music and fashion as well. So when we think about um, sort of how we can celebrate or commemorate Women's Hi History Month, I just encourage all to be creative, um, think expansively, and um, honor the progress um, and take on um, with motivation and, and knowledge the, the challenges that still confront us.